Hello and welcome back to the Principles of Finance series. Um, last time we were dealing with time value of money, um, kind of tapped into the compound factors and discount factors. Um, so let's kind of go back there. So I'm just going to pop TVM up here again. Um, let's put down our variables: present volume, future volume, PMT, just PMN, uh, I, and N. Now, last time I showed you a little bit about the mathematics. Um, those two formulas of um, you know how compound interest works and how present value and future value and interest rate and a certain amount of years are linked together. Um, but I think it's also pretty important in time value analysis uh, to set up a timeline um, just so that we really understand what we're talking about here. Um, let's just give one, two, three, four, five. Now, something that's important to know. Um, is that we're going to plot our periods over here, so let's just say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, sorry, it's not so neat. Um, year 0 is always today. Uh, this is where we're standing. This is always today. Always think about year 0 as today. And year 1 is obviously us standing over here and looking out one year into the future, so that is essentially our first year, but the year zero is always today. Um, now, the idea is is that if we're standing here, there's always going to be a present value here and some future value in the future. So at the moment, let's just say if we're looking at a time span of five years, there's going to be some future value in the future. Now, the present value is kind of, let's say it's going into an account. Um, when you put your variables into a financial calculator, you always need to make sure the present value and the future value have opposite signs. Uh, by definition, they can't have the same signs. That would be obviously an impossible miracle to be able to put, um, you know, to be able to always have positive cash flows without having to to give any money out. The idea of an investment, the idea of a security, is that you have to give some negative cash outflow today, um, like this negative present value to get some positive future value back in the future. Um, so, you know, that's obviously, um, that's obviously, you know, a given it goes without saying. Um, but the idea over here is that if you try and put in two variables into the calculator for present value and future value which have the same sign, um, so either they're both negative or they're both positive, um, the calculator will give you an error. So always make sure that one of these signs is negative and one of them is positive. Um, so the present value goes in, let's say, as negative because we're really interested in cash flow. Um, so you know, if you go to the bank, even though yes, you're not obviously burning the money, you're not you know taking a lighter and setting it on fire, um, you're still you're still uh, experiencing a negative outflow, a cash outflow over here because the money is kind of going away. Yes, it is going to come back positive um, in five years' time, and it's going to come back very positive, we hope. Um, but you know this is the idea of uh, of uh, of the financial calculator and how it works. Um, so never forget um, to put in your signs correctly with present value and future value. So I think in the last example we gave um, we gave some sorry in the last video we gave some example of that we had a a present value of ten dollars. So now that we know about the signs, that's going to go in as minus ten. Um, future value, well, that's what we're solving for, so let's just leave that blank for now. Payment, well, we'll get to that later on. I'll just give you a quick rundown. Payment is basically how we start dealing with annuity securities or perpetuity securities. Um, kind of payment is a frequent payment uh, that is paid um, annually or periodically, for example. So the payments would usually be plotted um, right here, and they would all be the same. Um, that's what we consider to be like an even cash flow series, for example, because all of these payments over here in the middle are, are kind of even. They're exactly the same. That's what that's what we consider an annuity. Um, but we'll get to that uh, probably later on, or maybe in the next video, where we discuss uh, this payment function and how it works. Um, but for now, let's just say that there are ten dollars that were invested into the account. Um, we said at the time that the interest rate, I think, was. 10% we said it was, um, and always remember that when we put in variables into the financial calculator, present value, future value, payment, and number of years are all put in as figures. Um, obviously this is dollars, this is dollars, payment is also in dollars, n is number of periods or number of years. The only one that goes in um, that is an interest rate is i for interest. 
um, but don't put in 0 0.1 it already knows that it's an interest rate the calculator knows already so all you need to do is type in 10 so all of these are going in as just figures the only thing you need to remember is not to convert this uh, to a percentage um, because when you put in as 10 the calculator would already do that work for you and then going back to our example from before we said that n was 5 it's you know staying in for 5 years as you can see it's staying in for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 years um, so let's plot this on the let's plot this on the timeline. Let's erase this over here. Oh, um, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm still getting used to this. Um, so let's let's kind of erase. Sorry, let's kind of um, plot right here the minus ten. Um, that's going to be our outflow. Usually, the way that it's drawn is that if we have an interest rate of ten percent, you would just pop it right on here. Um, you don't need to write it you know, in every single one because we know it's the same, it's just consistent interest rate. And n is 5 and we can see that just from the fact that we plotted our, our, our periods um, over here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Um, so all you'd have to do is you just have to punch in negative 10 into present volume, um, you know, 10 as i, n is 5. Since we're not dealing with payment over here you can always just zero it out just to be sure and then you just solve for the future value and you just compute um, so if you pop all that in correctly um, you'll see uh, that it comes out to um, 1610 uh, so we know that our money and you'll also notice that when the future value is actually given back to you it's also positive which is good news because um, well, let's just call it 1611 because it's 0.1051 um, that we put ten dollars out five years ago. Now we're in the future, and we've made sixteen dollars and eleven cents. So we've had six bucks um, and eleven cents of profits, I guess, from uh, investing in this security. Now this is the most basic time value of money question that you could ever get, um, and you know it's quite likely that you may be tested. Um, on this kind of you know very very basic stuff um, it's likely as well that he may give you a present value and a future value and then ask you well you know what's the interest rate um, which is also you know it's also a valid question um, he might also kind of you know leave out the number of years and say you know how many years did it take you know Larry to get from 10 bucks to 16 bucks at an interest rate of 10 um, and that would obviously be um, you know that would obviously be on you know on you to just kind of figure out which variables he's uh, he's giving you and then just to plug them in. Um, finally, I think to close off this video, we'll d we'll deal with PNT next time. Um, to close off this video, um, you know if you think about simple interest, you know 10% on 10 would have been 10 cents, right? And if you would have made 10 cents, you know. Um, if you'd made ten, ten cents on on ten bucks, then you you know you wouldn't have gotten as far as as making a whole six dollars. And the only reason why this has happened is because you know as we showed uh, in the very first video that you know interest will accumulate on the interest, and therefore your returns will you know obviously expand um, exponentially. Um, so thanks for watching, and next time we'll deal with this PMT um, and annuity payments.